Alright everyone, welcome back to my next video. Uh, today we are going to have a class from Homes on Wheels Alliance at the Virtual RTR 2021. And so I think you're going to really enjoy it. And uh, with me is Sue Ann Carlson, the, uh, the Executive Director of Homes on Wheels Alliance, who did an awful lot of the work, amazing amount of work, on putting this all together. So, uh, Sue Ann, tell us about uh, the a little bit about what's going on here. So, from January 14th to January 21st, 2021, we have online RTR and women's RTR classes that will be offered on the Homes on Wheels Alliance YouTube channel. But what we're doing is we're taking those and doing a condensed version of them and moving them over to the Cheap RV Living YouTube channel. And that's what you're watching here. So uh, this is a monetized channel, but all the money that will you make by watching the videos, you're gonna make me money by watching the videos, all of that money will be forwarded to, from now on and forever, will be forwarded to Homes on Wheels Alliance. So I'm not making any money on this. It will be a contribution to uh, Homes on Wheels Alliance. Now, because this is a condensed version, there's a whole version on the Homes on Wheels Alliance YouTube channel. And if you go there, you'll see the whole thing, including questions and answers afterwards. So while this is condensed, you can see the whole thing by going to Homes on Wheels Alliance. And how will they find that? Uh, in your YouTube channel search bar, type in Homes on Wheels Alliance, and it will come up. Uh, so once you go to the channel or this channel, Cheap RV Living, there will be a playlist that says RTR, uh, Virtual RTR 2021. And so you can see all the classes there in, in order and see them all at once. So next we're going to play the video of the class and I hope you enjoy it and learn a lot from it. And we'll see you at the end of the video. Casey joins us today from Arizona. She's been on the road for about four years at this current time. She lives out of a car. And uh, you can find her the website that she works on, Cheap RV Living. The link to that, as well as the um, YouTube channel, is down below in the description. So go and visit that at your leisure. Casey, please take us take us into the minimalism world. Thank you so much, Sue Ann. That was such a kind and warm welcome. I appreciate it. So I'm so happy to be here today, and I'm also honored, by the way, to call this entire team friends. Um, they've just worked so hard, so lots of kudos to the team for the 2021 RTRs. So um, I work for Cheap RV Living, as Sue Ann mentioned, and I'm kind of the behind the scenes person. And minimalism is a subject I am really passionate about, and so I'm very happy to share some of my knowledge with you today. Okay. So um, uh, hopefully you can all see a quote right now. <laughs> and that quote says, the secret of happiness you see is not found in seeking more, but in developing the capacity to enjoy less from Socrates. And okay, so um, with that, um, what is minimalism? Minimalism is owning fewer possessions, and minimalism is intentionally living with only the things that you really need, those things that support your life and your purpose. By removing the distraction of excess possessions, we can focus more on the things that matter most. Obviously, there's the benefit of having less clutter in our physical space and the financial benefit of spending less money on things we don't really need, but there's also the practical reasons in our current economic situation. I'm gonna be talking about some reasons for minimalism. And with the recent downturn in the economy, many people are losing their homes or they're having a hard time paying rent or finding themselves suddenly homeless. One of the most important reasons I think for becoming more of a minimalist is adaptability. It's more important now than ever for people who are living under this type of stress to be able to live in any type of vehicle because for many people they can only afford whatever vehicle they already have and so one of the best assets you can have in uncertain times is being as flexible as possible to the situation by being more of a minimalist it helps you to be more adaptable to whatever comes your way 
So if you're living in a small space, space from which you live and work, it really helps to keep the clutter down. So owning less means there's more that you can give to others to help them. And there's less to take care of. I don't have as much anxiety about my things or what I own because I know a lot of it is easily replaceable. Even my car actually, which I bought for very cheap for $2,500, it's replaceable without too much financial hardship. So that's, that's really helpful to me. And the American dream, it's helpful to look at where those values came from in terms of um, your present values right now. Are they still working for you? Are they relevant to your situation? For example, having a house and new vehicles and a mortgage, did those values of the American dream come from your parents or perhaps the media while you were growing up? Were those fears around scarcity and security sort of handed down to you? If you're here on the Howa channel or on Bob's channel, you might be thinking about owning less, or maybe you just feel like you wanna be free from all the stuff and the responsibilities and just get out from under so many financial obligations and live a more simple lifestyle. In terms of an emergency fund, it's probably my number one reason for being a, a minimalist is building that emergency fund. It's one of the most important things you can do. And I know you guys have all heard Bob talk about that. So just wanting to be prepared for being on the road. And so when you have less bills and expenses, you can add to that fund quicker, of course. Uh, you might be spending less on gas, uh, less on food, clothing, things like that, that. So you can contribute more to your emergency fund. And in turn, it contributes more to your sense of peace and security overall. And it gives you the peace of mind to know that if anything happens, you'll be okay and you can rebuild um, if you have to, and you're not living on the edge, you know, like if something happens or your car breaks down, or maybe your YouTube channel isn't doing as good that month as you thought it would. But um, in this way, like even if you need mechanical work or whatever the problem is, you've got um, an emergency fund to lean on. So that's, that's very important. And this is a quote that I really love. Uh, Nature is pleased with simplicity and nature is no dummy. <laughs> and that is for sure. <laughs> so now that we've talked about some of the reasons for minimalism, I'd like to take you into my top 20 steps <laughs> for becoming more of a minimalist, no matter what you live in. And so I just wanna be clear that we're really talking about, you know, whether you're in a house right now and you're thinking about being a nomad, or maybe you live in a Honda Fit and it's just too crowded in there. So from one end to the other, anyone can be more of a minimalist. So the first step is to have negative space in your vehicle or home. And I call this vehicle feng shui. The goal of feng shui is to create harmony and balance between an individual and their environment. So nature doesn't look or feel cluttered. And so if you're living in a cluttered space, um, it makes it more difficult to have clear thoughts, to create that balance around you. Uh, it's very helpful and it's better when you have negative or empty space, it's equally as important, I think, as um, thinking about what you're going to put in the vehicle. So um, let that be sort of a deciding factor when you're deciding what vehicle to choose. And apply the rule of live beneath your means in terms of space. So depending on what you might be living in, thinking one size smaller can be very helpful. So if you're in a house, you might think like an RVer. And if you're in an RV, you might think more like a van life person. If you're in a van, you might think more like a car person. And if you're in a car, you might think more like a backpacker. Just like the saying goes about living beneath your means financially, you can live beneath your means in terms of space by always owning less than what you can fit in your current vehicle. In this way, you have less in the vehicle than what you have space for. You have more empty or negative space and that just feels better overall. This is a video that Bob put out. It's this guy, Tommy, and Tommy created a van space in his home. So he really learned how it would all fit before he made his jump to van life. 
And I wanted to talk about sentimental items. And I know that this is a pretty sensitive subject for a lot of people. So I want to approach it that way that, you know, no one can possibly know how it feels for you personally to lose a loved one. Something that can be helpful to reassure yourself is that the person is not in the objects. The person is inside you. The person is in your dreams. Uh, the person is in your memories and the conversations that you share with other people. Another suggestion is to maybe have some kind of personal ceremony where you um, take that item that helps you to feel more connected with that person, but you, you have a, like a memorial service, like out in nature, and maybe bury that mug or item, whatever it is, that you might feel guilty about not keeping, and maybe write your feelings down about missing that person and loving them, and place that note in there with the object. So find practical ways, you know, to bring small items with you, but if you can't bring everything, just find other ways to honor that person that you love and keep those memories alive without actually holding on to the physical item. So I'm going to just adjust uh, this framework just a little bit here. Thanks for your patience with that. Okay, so really evaluate if you need that storage unit. So getting rid of a storage unit is tough, but rewarding both financially and with more freedom. So you can begin to have garage sales or give those items away. At first, I did have a storage unit and I lived in Alaska for 12 years. So, or no, 13, I don't know, a bunch of years. <laughs> so anyway, I was no longer, longer living in really cold conditions, but my God, did I have the gear for it? And it was so expensive. I had my extra tough boots. I had my parkas and down mittens, everything you can think of. And every single item I felt cost me like two to $400 for all of that. But you know, after six months, I just hadn't touched a thing. And I just realized I'm gonna live in the desert. I'm gonna move to warm climate. So just learn how to let go. It's like a constant process of letting go. You can take pictures. I had oil paintings that I loved. Um, you know, and I miss them a little bit, I really do. But you can take pictures of them and you can put it on your laptop. And then um, once you're sure about this lifestyle change, you can take the steps to free yourself of that financial burden of your storage unit, especially if you've not needed those things. I would say for like six months or more, it, that's kind of a good sign. You know, if you haven't needed them for six months, then you're probably okay to live without them. I'd like to share another quote with you. And this is, there are two ways to be rich. One is by acquiring much, and the other is by desiring little. So that is a really, really helpful quote. And downsizing in terms of what vehicle you drive. Now, not everyone wants to downsize in terms of what vehicle you drive, and, and many of you, you know, probably won't. But if you do, uh, I think the number one thing to look for is reliability. So that's really what I looked for with my car. And I have a Toyota and I, I feel like for me, that was one of my favorite brands for reliability. But of course, safety is incredibly important. And you, know, you always wanna put safety first. And this is a website called Fuely. And on Fuley, everybody enters their miles per gallon for their make model year. And so it's just like this huge database. And um, when I was looking for a car, often I'd go there and just look up any year, any make, any model, and you'd have a ton of data in, in there. And, and so it gives you a graph chart and it's, it's really excellent. Another thing that's really helpful when deciding what car to get if you want to maybe downsize into another vehicle is to go to carcomplaints.com. On carcomplaints.com, it is so all encompassing. It, it is amazing. They have every type of vehicle, make, model, year. And then this is small, so you might not be able to see it, but for whatever vehicle it is, they list it by year. And here's the graph of what years had more complaints than others. Then you can click on each graph 
and it will show you it will just list out how many complaints were filed for every type of thing and it also has recalls on there and um, lots of other helpful information crash tests and uh, and then it will list the top three problems that that car and that year had or for that vehicle overall and uh, this is something that i talked about in my previous um, class that i did for hawa um, I did how to organize a small a microspace. And basically, if you want to make a small car into a big car, of course, you could add uh, universal bars. These are called universal bars or a roof rack or a, a toolie box on top and give you that, that added storage. This allows for more space inside your car. It creates a place for coolant, uh, oil, large bedding or camping items, you know, maybe your traction pads, your shovel, or any other items that are used for getting you um, out of getting stuck. And it's also easier for cleaning out your car and it gives you a place for those garage type items or those bulky bedding items, like I said. Um, they can be stored even during the day in this space. And so it's also a place to lock up these items when your car goes into the mechanic. And here's an example of some hitch storage of a hitch storage on the back of the car. So um, if you're going to do hitch storage, you can, you know, get these large locking boxes, uh, tractor supply has such a huge selection. I found for me, I really wanted to go into Traxor Supply. I wanted to look around and you know take a look at everything they had before I decided whether or not I was going to put a box on my car. So it just gives you a better idea and to see what type of locking boxes exist. If you're going to go for this um, tray in the back of your car to help carry items uh, like, like what we just talked about, I would highly recommend getting a rise. Um, this is called a hitch with a rise. And usually it's about six, six inches, six to seven inches. And in this car, this looks like it's a Honda Fit. There's no rise on this. One of the most important things when you're boondocking and you're on these really rough roads and you're going up and down in through washes and stuff like that, what will happen is the back of the car is always the place where it's going to hit. So that's going to be on, if you get a sedan, your trunk will likely hit there. If you have one of these, it will hit unless you put a rise on it. I've seen people put a rise even up to like 10 inches. Um, so that is something really important that I do highly recommend. So um, the next is talking about staying warm. And I include this in the topic of minimalism because I want, I want to show, help show you to think outside the box. Like you don't have to have an Olympian heater or a buddy heater. If you're in a very small space, uh, you wouldn't know this unless you sort of tried it out, but body heat will actually heat um, your car up really well. Like if you have you and a pet, you're going to have a lot of body heat in that vehicle. Also, um, just rolling up the windows, I find if I roll the windows all the way up, you know, I don't have a source of heat inside, so it's safe for me to roll the windows up. I have other uh, areas where I have incoming air. But anyway, um, that really helps hold the heat in, of course, reflectix on the windows. And then I have um, glued a uh, dark black fabric on the outside of my Reflectix. I highly recommend that for anyone, just for stealth factor, um, because I've been in some situations um, where I could have gotten knocked on, um, but because I had the black on the outside of my Reflectix, it really saved the day. So um, another thing that you can do, uh, let me just switch over here, is you can, oopsie, <laughs> Okay, so you can also use warm down bags. And um, in this case, um, I have two hike and bike down bags. They're 15 degree, but synthetic might be better for you. Whatever, whatever you feel is best for you. I have wool socks, um, and like alpaca wool socks, and I have down booties. So I really have some items that 
completely uh, keep me too warm. <laughs> and for my dog too, um, she just gets too warm in the down bags and things like that. So think about, um, do you really need a heater? Uh, can you drive to warmer areas in the winter? Um, you know, can you go to lower elevations? And how uncomfortable are you willing to be? <laughs> that is the bottom line. The more, the more comfort, I got this, uh, the more comfort, the less freedom, the less comfort, the more freedom. So we've heard Bob say that maybe in the past. And um, then I'd like to talk about staying cool. So um, this was really surprising to me. At the 2020 RTR, I went to the open house and I met a person, if you're watching, thank you so much. It was a woman who had lived in her Honda Fit for three years, and I couldn't wrap my mind around that she didn't have a ceiling fan, she didn't have a hole in her roof, and I couldn't imagine how she stayed cool. Well, she told me all she needed was these uh, recharge were these rechargeable fans. So here you can see I, I keep a rechargeable fan over the passenger window, and I have one in the back. I have actually three going right now, and then this is a Chill Pal. And I, I highly recommend if you have a dog, big or small, you can cut the back of the chill pal and you can, you dip it in water, squeeze it out, and then you lay it over your pet and it stays cooler longer due to the type of fabric that it is. And it will just like instantly cool my pet down. She stops panning within five minutes and she goes to sleep. So it must be um, something that's very soothing for her. So um, again, just evaluate how uncomfortable you're going to be <laughs> and still be okay. I mean, I mean, sometimes I don't stay as warm as my friends do with heaters, but I still prefer being in a smaller space because, you know, for many reasons. So I'm willing to give up some of those comforts. And other ways to keep the car nice and cool, and this has worked very well for me in a car, is that I have these lightweight aluminum window shades. These are made of four layers of fabric. It's aluminum, like black fabric, a fire retardant, and something else. Anyway, I have two of those. I can wrap them completely around my vehicle. I can shade my entire vehicle. And then I also have these, I don't even know what they're called, like rain protector things. And um, I'll just show you from the inside. So I can always have my windows open almost two inches all the way around and no one can even see from the outside that the window is open at all. So that is really handy um, to have these things. And that way, um, no matter what the weather is outside, you always have your windows open. So let's see if I can catch up here on my Okay, there we go. Okay, great. So uh, any half awake materialist well knows that which you hold holds you. Tom Robbins. So he knew that even back in 1936. And I'd like to talk about solar. And of course, um, I can't go too far down this rabbit hole, but I can just tell you um, how you can do this minimally. Of course, many people are using the Jackery or a Goal Zero. Uh, these are real small solar panels and you can charge a portable rechargeable battery. I do have one of these, it plugs into my car lighter. I can charge four items at once while I'm driving. And then another thing that I have, I have a regular solar system, which I'll show you in a minute, but I always keep a 300 watt Best Tech inverter in my car and that I have, I always have my XM radio plugged into it. And actually that's because when I turn my car off, no matter where I'm at, I like to still be able to listen to XM. So that is directly plugged into my house battery, uh, this Best Tech inverter. And also it's just super handy to have as a backup for any system. Um, lots of times it saved me. If anything goes down, I just start my car, plug it in and I'm good to go. Of course, this is a relay isolator which maybe some of you have seen or not seen. What a relay isolator does is it, uh, it helps to charge your car while you're driving from the alternator to your house battery. So they make relay isolators also specifically for lithium and they have parameters where they will cut off and they won't wear your alternator down. And so this is a way to jump your vehicle if you need to. And um, this, 
is in place of these large bulky jumper cables. And uh, lastly are some collapsible items. Um, you might think about collapsible bowls, especially for your pets. Um, having, like I said, sleeping bags that pack down real small. Um, I have both of these items for a desk, one that I can sit and just have my legs straight out under, the other one that I sit up cross-legged at, um, which is a, um, these great little desks that are made with foldable legs. They angle and everything, so I highly recommend them if you work online or spend any amount of time online. And finally, you do you. So this is um, my closing thought for you is that everyone's need for comfort level is gonna be different. So try not to compare yourself to others or how much or how little they own. Just do what feels best for you and your own level of freedom and adaptability that you want versus thinking that you have to be more like someone you saw on YouTube or someone you saw in camp. So each person, you know, for each person, minimum, minimalism <laughs> has an individual meaning. So going from a huge house to a larger RV really might be downsizing for someone. For someone else, going from an RV to a van or a van to a car might be minimalizing for them. So you just do you. And my last slide of the class is I wanted to leave you with something meaningful. So our souls are not hungry for fame, comfort, wealth, or power. Our souls are hungry for meaning, for the sense that we have figured out how to live so that our lives matter. And I know if you're on the Howa channel and you're on Bob's channel, you're, you're probably already thinking along these lines. So thank you so much. I hope that was helpful. I'm gonna stop my share now. Thank you, Casey. That was really good. That was some very good teaching. I think you got a lot out of it. Uh, but this was a condensed version. So to see the entire thing, including questions and answers, where do they need to go? You can go to the Homes on Wheels Alliance YouTube channel. In your search bar, just type in Homes on Wheels Alliance and it will come up. And once there, there will be a playlist there of all the RTR videos in their entire length. So there will be a lot more info there than this condensed version. Well, I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later.